We are back and I'm going to do our Q&A that is proudly sponsored by BetterHelp. If you guys have nobody to talk through in a talk therapy sense, I highly, highly suggest BetterHelp, but more on that in the video. First, let's get onto Instagram and talk about all the things that you guys want to talk about when it comes to asking me a question. And I'm really glad to bring these to you because a lot of my videos are constructed of podcast content whereby I really you know, delve into a subject of how to make him this or how to make him that. And it's very poignantly about a big theme, like black cat energy or something. But this one is I can actually answer specific questions. One of them being how to respond to gaslighting conversations with your boyfriend. Well, there's two operative words there, boyfriend and gaslight. Number one operative word that is stunning to me is that you would put up with gaslighting from a boyfriend, a friend who's a boy. He's not a husband, he's not your mother, he's not birthed you, he's not paid your bills, he is a boyfriend and yet he is gaslighting you. He is a boyfriend that is gaslighting you. Let's break it down. Gaslighting is a form of manipulation and it's really coercive and really dangerous because it allows the person who is being gaslit, coming from the movie Gaslight in the 50s, I believe, where the husband used to turn off the gas lights, making the wife feel that she has gone crazy. It's a way of denying someone's reality to make them go crazy. So a boyfriend, a friend you have, who's a boy, who has not even made you his wife, who you're not even married to, is gaslighting you, heavily manipulating you into believing you're crazy. How to respond to that? By letting the doorknob hit him where the good Lord split him. I don't understand why you would even entertain a conversation with a boyfriend who is nothing serious to you. And yes, I mean nothing serious, even if he's a boyfriend of 10 years, you've not moved forward in any kind of way into anything. However, for those watching whose husband or mother or anyone this is, the best way to respond to gaslighting is to have really, really strong anchors in your life of people who make you feel sane, of people who make you feel seen, of people who make your reality known. Don't let the gaslighter, aka narcissist, isolate you from people in your life who will make you feel grounded because that's exactly the objective and, and that is the only way. You have to feel grounded in your reality. How to turn a man down if you realize he's not what you want? I mean, out of all the questions that I really feel for, this is one I kind of feel for, but not so much. I mean, you turn him down by saying, thank you so much, I really like you, but not in that way. And yes, that will hurt him, and that might not be nice, and life is not nice, and any way you say it, it's not going to be pleasant for him. So just say it in the best way you can, and hopefully he will learn. The whole point of courting and relationships and having these kind of interactions, for men especially, is to bump into walls and realize that, you know, they haven't secured a mate or whatever it is. And if there is some constructive criticism you can give him and he asks for it, go ahead. I don't mean don't be rude, but if he was, like, really annoying or too persistent or whatever, let him know. If he's a nice guy, let him know. What's a healthy detachment period? Should there be a specific timeline to moving on? They say that the timeline is half the time you were together, so I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's true, but there is no specific or healthy time. How to understand in short time that the guy is future faking and not serious? The way you understand if someone's future faking is to watch their actions, not their words, because a lot of times when someone's future faking, they're talking. They've got the gift of the gab, they're talking a lot, blah, blah, blah running their chops, but they don't have any actions behind it. There's a method that you use where you silence everything that they say and just watch what they do. Within a three month period, you will see if that person is future faking because a lot of future faking takes a lot of gift of the gab. How to attract your life partner after dealing with a toxic man. The only way that you would have been dealing with a toxic man is if you're an attractive partner to that. Toxic people are attracted to people who are codependent, people who have anxious attachment styles and things like that. The only way to have a healthy relationship and find your life partner after you've been dealing with a toxic man is to essentially change yourself. You have to begin to play a different character in life. You have to change the avatar of who you are. I have several videos on it, like how to live the soft life, how to become the woman you want to be, how to make him obsessed with you, blah, 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 blah. There's hundreds on my channel. So I suggest you watch them if you've got the time. But you cannot go from being who you are, the person you are, that attracted the toxic person. Not that it's your fault, but 
you did attract him to attracting a healthy partner just like that you've got to change who you are how to deal with the narcissistic mother-in-law girl <laughs> you uh did not get lucky there as nor did i because the dog next door just will not let me live my life but honestly this dog is just a pain in the ass because not only does he disturb my filming but he also disturbs my kids sleeping and these are first world problems. I'll have you know these are first world problems. Just like it was a first world problem when I went today to get my uh, SNS removed and she drilled into my nail bed with her little nail file. And I was like, great, now there's blood. Now, you know, I'm going to get infection. Now we're going to have to get my fingernail removed. Great. And it's all first world problems because, listen, I was listening about some things going on in the world and it's just like nothing compared. And it's a lovely dog. But God bless the dog. I love the dog. But sometimes things just get to you, girl. And they get to you. And this is the sponsor, BetterHelp. That's where they come in. You go, you talk to your therapist and it's talk therapy. You literally get a lot of this off your chest. You get a lot of this that a lot of people are talking about off your chest. The more you talk through things, the more things become centered in reality and you realize how unimportant they are. That was a, a lead into my sponsor, by the way, BetterHelp. But honestly, I'm a human being. Everybody gets like kind of diverted from who they want to be and the, the ideal version of themselves and it's really good to have a grounding point better help is not in person you can do it from the comfort of your own home you don't have to go anywhere you don't have to take that time to do it you will usually be matched to a therapist within 48 hours go use my link you will get a discount it's a great service if you need someone to talk to in this day and age we all need someone to talk to whether it's about the dog or the nail or an actual serious problem that you might be having that you've got no one to talk to you about. I highly suggest it. Use my link for a discount. And let's get on to... I found out I'm pregnant. Tips to navigate staying aligned with a partner and not distancing us. Ooh. And we were talking about mother-in-laws. Oh my god. Two big subjects. Pregnancy can alienate you from a partner. But one might hope that your man is mature enough to understand that nothing changes for him and everything changes for you. Who he was before remains body, mind, spirit, hormone levels, everything and everything about you changes. Every single mama jamming thing changes. And I hope he is steadfast and masculine enough to weather the storms of your changes. You as a woman should not be trying to find navigations of staying aligned. He should be the stirrer, the, the driver of that ship and, and wondering how to keep aligned with you. Unfortunately, it's you asking this question, isn't it? It's not him. So me giving him that advice is futile because he's not the one watching this video. But I would say from a woman's point of view, do everything you can and everything in your power to be grounded in that pregnancy. If he's hurt about it, let's hope he gets over it. It's not your time to try and bend yourself backwards like a pretzel, like women tend to do in today's world and society and have done for centuries in order to make a man happy, yeah? Pregnancy is the one time that I would say categorically throw that shit out the window and just be who you need to be for your baby, period. Now, a time when you should not be who you want to be, period, is when dealing with a narcissistic mother-in-law, number one. Narcissists don't respond to genuineness, they don't respond to reality, they don't respond to anything really, they have their own agenda and again if you want to watch about that there's things that about them on my channel. Mother-in-laws similarly cannot be contended with. They are the final boss and it's very difficult for them to ever see you in any real light and, and you will lose that battle. Not because you will actually lose it, but because if you have a, a mother, you might have a mother, you being a human being, if you really imagine your husband or partner arguing with your mother, it's never going to end up pretty for you, even if he's right. So I would say with a mother-in-law, you would hope that you have a husband who will back you and protect you in dealing with her narcissism. I'm just going to take it at face value that you said she's a narcissist, so I take it at face value. <laughs> Or you just avoid her at all costs. You do the grey rock method. You grey rock. You are neither happy nor sad. You're neutral. When he wants to see her, you go, yes, honey, of course you go see her. I have just um, something busy to do. Something very busy. Because you are not going to essentially win. There is no point fighting with a mother-in-law. And there's no point fighting with a narcissist. I can't trust my man because my ex cheated. My current boyfriend is loyal. How do I overcome this? 
you can't make somebody pay the price of what somebody else did. And if you do, then you're painting them with that color of that person, of the cheater. And the more you do that, the more you are in the wrong. And in this situation, you are in the wrong. And you have to know, just as you were okay when your ex cheated, my ex cheated, I know how you feel. Just as you were okay, and you are okay, you didn't die, right? You're here. You will be okay if this one does. And you will learn. Maybe you will be a better judge of character. But know this one thing. There is no absolutes. There is no absolutely all men are cheaters. There's no absolutely all men are not. There is no absolutes in this world. So by default, you can cognitively understand that because there is no all, that he might not be. And if he isn't a cheater, then the worst thing you can do is paint him with the brush of one. So let's go this way. If he is not a cheater and you keep thinking he is one and accusing him, you will ruin that relationship and you will lose a good person. Now, if he's not a cheater and you don't paint him with that brush, you have a good relationship. If he is a cheater and you trust him and you think he's not a cheater, what's the worst that could happen? You find out he is and you survive and you don't die because this whole time you're developing yourself into being the best person you could ever be. Or third option, he is a cheater and you accuse him of being a cheater and you were right. And I guess that's that then. I know which option I would rather do. I would rather trust someone, not accuse them. I know I'll be fine if they're not, but, but the best part of that is if they are not a cheater, then you win. How can I stop losing myself in a relationship? It happens every single time. You lose yourself in a relationship uh, because you've been taught to be the good girl. My eight week course is about this. One of the modules is about this. Sign up before the 17th of July, if you want to join. In being taught to be useful and being taught to be productive, in being taught to be on time, school, productive, you're doing the right thing, always the right thing, you lose yourself. You lose yourself for the sacrifice of the greater good. And how can you undo that? How can you rewind that? How can you break through that? It's really, really difficult. Intrinsically, it's so difficult. You're trying to break through a whole system of how you were raised because you, in the back of your mind, think that by being helpful, useful, and convenient, you're going to be loved but you lose yourself in the relationship because nobody falls in love with the shadow of themselves. Nobody wants like Thingo in the back who's just going to do everything that they say. You need to become so ingrained in the fact that it's so unattractive to be just somebody's sidekick, rob into their Batman, that it needs to scare you into not being that way. How do you maintain healthy eating? I'm going to be vulnerable with you. At the moment, I haven't been. It's not even vulnerable, it's just honest. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't been. It's been a bit of a cluster fluff. Sometimes I'm very, very motivated. Sometimes I am not. The only thing that I've been purely motivated on without stopping is my podcast and my business and my children. With my body, I sometimes stay very motivated because I feel healthy when I eat healthily. It's almost like I, I step into a different character. I write about that in my book, The New Rules. I step into a different character before you ask me where it's available, anywhere you buy books, or you can link it as well in the description box. You almost have to put on the skin of this person who, I don't know, let's imagine Angelina Jolie. It just always comes to my head as an example. I don't imagine her getting up and eating donuts. I just don't. Sometimes I literally have to put on the skin of a character in order to get myself into the mood of doing something. But I do things that are unhealthy, like Diet Coke, things like that. And I use them as like a as like a push through because I work too much and my kids are too too young and the combination no they're not too young they're perfectly young but the combination of the two is difficult. How to feel comfortable when you know your man secretly stares at other women in a sexual way? The idea of feeling comfortable with something that intrinsically makes you uncomfortable at your core is not the right thing to do. The right thing to do is sit with the discomfort and understand why does the discomfort make you uncomfortable. You feel uncomfortable about it because you have sexual competition, because he's looking at women sexually and biologically, we as women feel competitive with other women because if he gets you pregnant, you are vulnerable for a very, very long time, at least five years. And the way we've developed is that the father needs to care about you enough to look after you and the young. And you might not be pregnant, you might not be wanting to get pregnant, you might be 58 and not able to get pregnant. 
unless you are, you know, miracles happen. And in the back of your mind, you're like, oh, competition. Now, if I'm sleeping with him and he's my partner, and now she's going to take him away, I'm in a vulnerable position. They've done all these studies about the fact that men get very, very triggered and upset at the idea of their partner being sexual with somebody else. And that is because of the paternal question. Before we had DNA tests, and that is just recently, he would just have to trust you that the child you have is his. So the idea of you sleeping with someone else puts paternity into question and he'd be raising somebody else's child thinking it's his and that was a problem, you know, as we developed societally, right? Same as for us. And in that same research, they found out that women got very upset when they found out a man was talking emotionally and having an emotional relationship with a woman. Why? Because you've just had his children and he's emotionally into Jessica. And now he's going to be putting his resources and his protection and everything and attention into Jessica and you and your children are going to die by the river, okay? So it's a problem. Him sexually looking at women is the start in your mind of that potential danger. Is it wrong? No. It's natural. The question of this is, when you say secretly, how can it be secretly and how can it be staring? Your man secretly stares at other women in a sexual way. For you to have seen it, that it's staring and it's sexual, it might have not been a glance. It's staring sexually at someone else. And that begs the question, why do you mean so little to him to allow you to see that? Or why does he want you to see that and how does he want you to feel? Down? Less than? Low? It begs all these questions. Not why, how to feel uncomfortable. The fact that you even say how to, how to feel comfortable is the fact that it's been indoctrinated in you that you should. If you can't look swiftly without you noticing, then you shouldn't look at all. And if he does, you should get upset. Make his life uncomfortable for a change. Single mom dating again. How to be a black cat when it's hard to have a life away from my kids. Be a black cat by putting your kids first. Your kids come first. If they want to be a part of your life, they have to deal with that. Black cats would never leave her kittens. How to heal after dealing with an avoidant man so that I don't sabotage future relationships. The same way I talked about the cheating guy and now you're with a normal guy. What do you wish you had known in your 20s? I have a whole video, one of my favorites that I've done of things I wish I knew about men in my 20s. But what I wish I knew in my 20s is that I will never be as young as I was and I'll never be as energetic as I was. Maybe I will be as energetic because people have all these things about, like if you do red light sauna and yoga, you'll have energy, but <clears throat> this applies to every part of your life. You will never be as young as you are now. And it's not about youth. I'm not like a youth worshiper. It's not about that. But you will never be as ready as you are now. You'll never be as young as you are now. And when you have all the money and all the assets and all the houses and all the Gucci bags that you want, I don't know why I chose Gucci, why you'll have all the Chanel and Hermes bags you want. When you're 80 years old, you will do anything to be 20 and broke again because we are born with an asset that you cannot buy and that is time. Enjoy your life in your 20s. It will work out. The dots will align. They will join. But don't sleep on the days because... <laughs> Stop rushing, you will get there. Love you lots, like Jenny Tots, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.